Maybe it's a classic or maybe a flop. Has Katie seen it? She probably has not. She'll sit down and watch it if it's good or it's bad. Hey, have you seen this? No, Katie hasn't seen that. Hi, I'm Katie, and if I had a nickel for every time someone said to me, wait, you haven't seen this movie? Oh my God, you need to see this movie. I'd be very rich. So this is my podcast where I finally watch those movies you all have told me I need to see, and I tell you what I think. And now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Meet Katie Peters from Katie Peters Plays on twitch.tv slash Katie Peters Plays with her podcast of Katie Hasn't Seen That where she has watched movies that she has never watched before and rate them accordingly based on her taste on whether or not she has liked the movie and a completely different source of independent ratings unlike other online websites. I'm looking at you, Rotten Tomatoes. And here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Katie Peters plays. I feel so official um that was thanks to Proupo. hello everyone i'm back and you can't do anything about it i'm here and just be aware katie hasn't seen that season two is happening thank you to a wonderful listener Proupo, for making that wonderful intro for me kind of get it's kind of like that catch-up at the beginning of a movie or tv show maybe not a movie a, a tv show that they're like previously on katie hasn't seen that It's been a while. I'm back from my quote unquote summer break that turned into a fall break that turned into it's now the new year. I'm recording this before 2022, but by the time this comes out, it will be 2022. So happy new year. It's nice to see you. I hope you're doing well. What have I been up to? I did a tabletop show that I GM'd, aka I was the game master of for the second time ever. You can watch that over on YouTube. Just look up Katie Peters Plays. The show was called The Cabin. I had a great cast. I poured a lot of love and time into it. So if you're interested in any of the tabletop I've done and you want to check out a one shot that's a horror drama, go watch that. I like to make my one shots like movies so that when you sit down, it's like you are watching a movie, an isolated movie event. So hopefully if you're interested, go watch that. That's something I've been working on and that took up a lot of time. So Now that that's done, I'm back, and we're about to start season two of Katie Hasn't Seen That. So, before we dive in, before you join her, remember there are spoilers. All right, I'm still doing that. Okay, so in my Discord, join Discord. We have a whole channel on Katie Hasn't Seen That if you want to talk about the movies and you want to share your opinion. And who knows, maybe your comment from either YouTube or Discord or wherever might show up in one of these episodes. A- Um, but I had a bunch of you do a poll in there and vote on the next four movies for Katie Hasn't Seen That to start off season two. And today we are starting with Starship Troopers from the year 1997. Wow, that came out. Okay, I haven't seen this movie, obviously. I didn't know it was from 97. That's a lot newer than I expected this to be. I'm a little rusty. I got to get back into this Katie Hasn't Seen That hat because I totally put a hat on when I, I don't know, y'all, I, I'm going to get this down. It's going to be fine. Um, This is Starship Troopers from 1997. It's the first movie you all voted on for me to start season two with. It is a sci-fi action movie right up my alley, also from the late 90s. So I have a feeling I'm going to love this. Also, I didn't know Neil Patrick Harris is in this. Denise Richards is, is in this. I said her name totally fine and didn't stumble on that at all. It's rated R. It is two hours and nine minutes long. Again, a little bit long. Uh, I don't know what it is about me and being like, no, a movie needs to be an hour and 30 minutes. I know movies can be longer than that. I think I've just gotten so used to short form media like TV shows. But then when a TV show is over an hour, it's like, oh, I get bonus stuff. So I don't I don't know, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to be more open minded to movies over two hours long. That's like a New Year's resolution. I don't usually do resolutions, but maybe this one should be. Be open to movies that are over two hours long, Katie. Okay? What do I think Starship Troopers is about? Literally have no idea. My brain goes to space marines. Pretty sure it's like probably military space people and they're going to be on a starship. Um, Nailing that so far. And they probably are going on a mission to 
Mars, I'm going with my gut here, to fight an alien force that only they can handle because they're special elite space marines. So that's my guess. That's what I think Starship Troopers is about. Uh, I won't lie. I don't feel too confident about my answer for what this movie is about, but I'm willing to put it out there that that's what I think it is. One of the things I started to do before the end of season one is talk about budget and box office earnings because I think that's super interesting. Apparently, Starship Troopers had a budget of an estimated $105 million. Holy shit. That's all I'll say. That's a lot of money. But what I think is more interesting is the gross worldwide. It earned $121,214,377. So it earned just a little bit more profit than the budget for this movie. How does that work? Like, is the studio just kind of like, well, at least we got another 15 million in the pocket. It just doesn't seem like a very good system. But, you know, what do I know? I'm not I'm not a movie maker. One of the things I found while looking this up is... Why is Starship Troopers so controversial? And I want to click it so bad, but I can't because there might be spoilers in it. But wait, is this movie controversial and I don't even know it? Am I watching some sort of film that's going to cause controversy within me? So that alone makes me want to watch this like ASAP because I'm like, what's controversial about Space Marines? Because that's totally what this is about, I think. So I guess I should just dive right in. I'm going to get aboard that spaceship and I'm going to launch myself into the ether. So let's see what ratings this movie has. It has a 7.2 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database, 66% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ugh, they changed things and now there's a new rating thing. It's not Metacritic. It's Letterboxd. Letterboxd gave it a 3.7 out of 5? Who are you, Letterboxd? Nobody asked. I looked it up. Metacritic gave it 51%. That's not great, but it's also not the worst I've seen. And here's the kicker. 92% of Google users liked this movie. So once again, Google users generally are a little bit more forgiving. It seems like this one's a little bit more all over the board. So I'm super curious how it's going to A, hold up, B, what is, what is this controversy? And C, it's space. So am I going to love this? Without further ado, I'm going to go watch Starship Troopers, and I'm going to let you all know what I think. I have returned, and I watched Starship Troopers. Da, 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 da. I don't remember how to do this, so I'm just going to do it. Um, okay, so we start this movie, and... Uh, I think the best thing for me to do is just to read a synopsis from Rotten Tomatoes because I think it's going to be the nicest and easiest way to summarize this movie. So it says, In the distant future, the Earth is at war with the race of giant alien insects. I didn't see that coming. Little is known about the bugs except that they are intent on the eradication of all human life. Why? But there was a time before the war. A mobile infantry travels to the distant alien planets to take the war to the bugs. They are a ruthless enemy with only one mission, survival of their species, no matter what the cost. I did not see the bug plot line coming at all. And I was kind of like, okay, sci-fi, space, war. And then the movie starts and it's a very long time where we meet our characters who are going to school. And at first I'm like, are they in high school? I think they were in college. And then they're trying to figure out if they want to go the military route because there's lots of perks associated with going the military route. However, there also seems to be a lot of dismemberment if you go the military route. It seems like the war with these bugs is not an easy war to fight. And I think the humans, I'm just going to say, it seems like the humans are not very well prepared to fight these bugs, yet they spend all this time dissecting bugs, talking about the bugs, educating themselves on the bugs, yet they're also saying, we don't know much about the bugs. And we'll get back to that more later, because I have thoughts. So we're just going to say there's there's like four main characters in this movie, though I think one of them is pretty much not a main character, but we're just going to go through these four people. We have Johnny Rico. He's kind of like the lead dude, and he's in a relationship with Carmen, who's played by Denise Richards of Real of House, Real, Real of 
Real Housewives fame, um, which honestly, <laughs> I watched a recent season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I think that's the one she's on. And man, there was some drama. But that's what I mostly know Denise Richards from. But she plays Carmen in this. There's also Dizzy, another character who is kind of in love with Johnny, but is forever the best friend and never the lover. And also Neil Patrick Harris, who plays Carl who's obviously a telepath and can communicate with animals. So I just have to say, I, I pulled up Internet Movie Database to get the character names and all that. And there's literally user list recommendations right next to it. And there's one that's just entitled Movies to Watch High in all caps, created three years ago with 44 titles. So if you need that, it's available to you on Internet Movie Database. I'll be honest, I don't really know where to start with this movie. It's kind of all over the place and the memories of which in my brain from watching the movie are kind of all over the place. It took a very long time to set up the movie. I was ready for space action immediately. And instead, we had to learn about Johnny and Carmen's relationship. And eventually he decides to go into the military because Carmen's going in the military and she wants to be a badass spaceship pilot. And then she breaks up with him. Johnny after he joins essentially for her and he's pretty much in like the infantry like he's in a separate place than Carmen so there was distance anyway but then he's with Dizzy who's another I mean honestly the people in this movie are ridiculously good looking how dare they and so Dizzy is then in the same infantry as Johnny and I think I should just go down my list of notes and try to piece together everything that I thought about this movie I didn't know it was about bugs, first of all. I was not prepared for the bug situation, and I'm not mad about it. I just thought that was an interesting choice and not at all what I thought this movie would be about. So I guess the first thing, when they're in college, there's kind of like this weird love triangle where Johnny's very much into Carmen, and Carmen and Johnny are dating, but clearly Carmen's not as into it. But then there's Dizzy, and Dizzy is into Johnny, but Johnny's into Carmen. So there's just this whole, like love triangle situation that plays out the entire movie. And I'll be honest, it's not really that important to the story. I don't feel like it was just kind of like there. And I had a hard time feeling connected to any of these characters. They all just seemed like cartoon versions of real people. And maybe that's an unfair judgment to pay on a sci-fi action movie because this movie is a sci-fi action movie. But... There was just stuff in this that I just didn't understand quite out the gate. Like, there's a lot of famous people in this. Like, Amy Smart shows up at some point. Gary Busey's son is in this. The guy, the Breaking Bad brother-in-law, he was there. And, um, yeah, so you just see, like, a lot of famous faces kind of pop up throughout. So, like, this movie clearly had a lot tied to it. I think the director also has done Robocop and Total Recall, two other movies I haven't seen. But I feel like this movie gave me the gist of what this director usually goes for. There is just some weird choices throughout this. Like there's the nude shower scene where we see some man butt, which, you know, I'm always down for. But there's just like a lot of boob. And I feel like, why was there no dong along? And that is a common complaint I have most movies. But but when it comes to nudity in movies, I just I don't like gratuitous nudity just for the sake of it. But my husband who watched this with me kind of pointed out that it in a way this movie does a decent job of having men and women shown more equally. So it seems like they have the same footing in this future scenario, which I appreciated. But then like this movie then also had nude lady, lady boobies and um, just man butt the standard. Where's the dong along? Let's get a petition going. There should be more dong along either CGI'd into past movies and in newer movies because it's not fair to only have female nudity all the time. That to me just always feels like a, a weird choice. And there, this comes up again because, okay, spoiler alert, <laughs> later on in the movie. So Carmen breaks up with Johnny and Johnny's devastated and he has issues with Dizzy because I think she tried to meddle in their relationship in the past. And so Dizzy clearly is hung up on Johnny, but eventually they do hook up and they get it on and there's this part where she's taking her shirt off and then her shirt gets like, I don't know if her shirt gets stuck on her head or if Johnny holds it on his head, on her head. And then it's almost like a combo of the two. It gets stuck and then Johnny like holds it over her head. And it, it was weird because then her just boobs are out. 
And it was just kind of like, was it necessary? No. Was it weird? Kinda. I don't know if it was supposed to be like, look, it's like real sex where it's never quite right. And uh uh-oh, we have mishaps in the future too with sex. It was just weird. I'm just going to say that. It was just a weird choice. And I almost felt like it's because they're like, oh, we could put her boobs on the screen longer. So we're just going to have her shirt get stuck on her head. And that's how my brain works, because ever since I was young, I've always been very much like, um, female nudity, male nudity, not quite equal. And uh, they need to fix that. So I guess a movie from 1997 would have that kind of issue for me. (laughs) But so much of this movie is them setting up that they're training for going to war with the bugs and they're getting ready to fight. And then the bugs pull this awful attack that apparently what I've read about online, too, is that the bugs attacked, but that it wasn't really the bugs and that the government actually blamed the bugs so that they could go to war with the bugs. And so then the troopers are at war with the bugs. So I guess to get caught up, Johnny and Dizzy are going to fight on this planet against the bugs. Carmen is like a fancy flying by the seat of her pants space pilot now. And so she's doing her own thing. And then there's Carl, who's like barely a part of the movie anymore. Carl's played by Neil Patrick Harris. And he's like supposed to be a scientist, but he's just kind of like off to the side doing whatever. And so you're pretty much caught up now. (laughs) So then they go to war and then they bring the troopers and drop them on the planet. And literally, it's just massacre after massacre after massacre when these people fight the bugs. And this brings me to my first major problem with the movie. (laughs) Why would you put so many unprepared people on a planet to fight mass hordes of bugs that dismember like mad bugs? They just cutting limbs off, decapitation, You name it. These bugs are dismembering it. There is a scene in this movie where they do like a flyover and they drop stuff on the bugs. And that is an effective way to attack these bugs. They've been fighting these bugs for a long ass time and they're just dropping people on the planet. And literally it's like mass murder. It it doesn't make sense. Like one of my issues is that the fighting in this movie doesn't make sense because they keep doing the same thing over and over and over again expecting a different result and i don't know that's the definition of insanity according to albert einstein but also as i sat there and watched this movie that is way too long just do the same things over and over and over again it just made it kind of tiresome to watch it took them forever to get to even the war part of the movie there was so much set up but I didn't care about any of the characters. They were all unlikable. Also, there's this part during the training when Johnny's in charge and he told uh, someone to take their helmet off and it's a live fire training session. So this person under his command takes their helmet off and gets shot by a live round and their head explodes. And then the person who shot it got sent home And then he got demoted, but then he decided to stay when it was war. But then he also had punishment relegated to him and the punishment. They like literally whipped him. There was just a whipping scene for punishment, which A, seems so primitive for the future. And B, was just so like odd. It was just, all of this was just odd. I couldn't make heads or tails of what this movie was trying to do half the time because it was just all over the place. And it was loosely time to bring out one of my favorite phrases loosely strung together and had different vehicles to to drive certain parts of the story but those parts of the stories didn't matter like they're trying to show carmen as like this badass pilot at one point and she's a rookie but she's also so crazy and then she's like backing out of this space station and she lets go of the way they're hooked up to the station at the last minute and she takes this really slow wild turn where she almost hits something But it looks like she's going to hit something, but she's so good that she knew she wasn't going to hit it. So there's like a lot of that. (laughs) Also, why do they have space pilots in the sky above this planet that the bugs are on when the bugs are launching their like, I don't know what their sack pods into space or whatever that are blowing up these space stations and they literally just fly into orbit of this planet and these bug pods are flying into space, blowing them up. 
But what's the point of the spaceships and these space stations? Because they literally just pull into orbit, go directly into where the space pods are, and then they blow up. They're not dropping troopers. They're not doing anything that I'm aware of. And they're just going directly where the danger is and then getting exploded immediately. So I'm just saying, I don't understand the logic behind that. And I'm just going to say it, the government in this movie and the military is not that smart. Maybe the bugs deserve to win. Maybe, I'm just going to say it, we should just let the bugs win. So we can, I mean, I don't know that we're going to win this war just based upon this movie. Okay, so obviously this movie's a bit campy, um, but I can really appreciate the SFX and practical effects that they used in this movie. They held up. They looked good. They stuck with a very specific formula, which was body parts coming off, m- more body parts coming off, and like lots of stabs through the stomach. It seemed like those were their go-to. That was one of the things, too, is I felt like a lot of this stuff was very repetitive and a lot of the things just kept happening over and over again, specifically with the fights. It was hordes and hordes of the bugs, people losing limbs, big bug shows up, someone tossed a grenade in the bug, bug goes boom. But also the fights with the big bugs seemed very easy, but it was just like rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat with all of the fights. And I kind of felt like new location, same fight. This movie's hella gory though. Like I was kind of not expecting that, but I mean, I'm not mad about that. I just, you know, kudos to them for the special effects. They did look really good. It just kind of felt generic and a bit like, I don't know, they were not prepared to fight these bugs. And then the things that worked to fight the bugs, which were doing flybys and dropping bombs on the bugs, was better than just dropping troops down into a place where they were going to get massacred over and over again. And during one of these fights, obviously Rico gets hurt real bad. Uh, Johnny Rico, I guess. They all called him Rico in the film, but I named him Johnny because I I won't lie. I, I sometimes when I don't, hmm, when a movie doesn't speak to me, I don't remember character names very well. So I guess that's a little bit of spoiler alert. Um, but let's just keep going. The <laughs> There was a part where Rico gets hurt, obviously, and but he's healing and he's in like a tank and there's like this little machine that's like healing his wound. That was pretty cool. I have to say the tech for that was really cool. And I enjoyed seeing some of this like futuristic world. It's just so interesting to see like what has improved and what hasn't. And I don't know if it's a commentary on society not really evolving and still having all those problems we've always had, which honestly that checks out. I don't know as a society how we can evolve. When I sit back and look at 2021 or any year of recent and I just get kind of bummed out on Netflix there's a thing called death to 2020 and there's one called death to 2021 where they look back on the year and it's kind of a mockumentary and they make fun of things and so I put that on recently and I got like I was able to laugh at it but I was really bummed out and sometimes I think when I watch movies like this I'm like I want to see us be better in the future and I didn't feel like we figured anything out and uh, that could just be this moment right now kind of thing. But I just felt like I was disappointed and let down in this movie about what the future could be. And it I won't lie to you. It felt like in the future, we did not have smart people in charge. And it was a frustrating part of this movie. I was just like, I can see ways that we're working to fight these bugs and y'all are just doing dumb shit all the time. And I will say with the CGI, because I just saw a note in here that the CGI was pretty good until the big bug showed up. But even then, it wasn't too bad. But yeah, like with anything, older movies age and sometimes things don't look as good as they would have in 1997. Um, I love the movie The Mummy, which you all know already if you've listened to my podcast or know me as a person at all. And I'll say it, the CGI in The Mummy doesn't hold up that great, but I still love that movie to pieces, regardless if that mummy looks a little bit pixelated, okay? There's also an actor that showed up in this named Seth Gillum, who is in The Walking Dead, which is what I know him from, and he plays a priest in that show and I hated his character on The Walking Dead for a variety of reasons but it was just interesting to see all these faces pop up and I'm like I know who that is and I know who that is and that was kind of fun because you know like Amy Smart showing up she had more of a bit role in it but it was just kind of neat to see faces that I like know just kind of show up occasionally in this movie I don't know I like that with any movie nowadays where I'm like oh look it's before they were big or when they were just getting their career going like that kind of thing 
I wrote down at one point that this movie is a love story with bug fights. Then as I continued watching the movie, I'm like, it's really not because there is like the Carmen Rico dynamic and then the Dizzy Rico dynamic. So like essentially, you know, Carmen and Rico break up and then eventually over time, Dizzy and Rico hook up and have a night together, which is when the weird sex scene happens. But in that sex scene, too, all I could focus on was the pillows because they were like future pillows and they were very weirdly made And I was like, those don't look comfortable. And so that was what I was focused on on the sex scene. And there was this weird parallel that kind of spoke to me a little bit where Rico told Carmen at the beginning of the movie that he loved her and she didn't say it back. And then in a weird switcheroo, Dizzy says to Rico in this specific scenario that she loves him and he doesn't say anything. And that just kind of bummed me out. (laughs) But I was like, I don't know. It's just kind of like an interesting parallel that they put in the movie. I just had such a hard time feeling for any of these characters or even connecting with them because I felt like everything was so rapidly paced, but that nothing really got accomplished. And it was just too much of one thing, not enough of another. And you just end up in this movie. And then all of a sudden there's these bug fights where nobody's surviving. And then, you know, there was a lot of death in this movie. Like, so Dizzy dies. But like, and it was kind of sad, but I was just sitting there like, okay. And her dying scene was so intense. And by that, I mean, it was like kind of overacted and it was too long. I know you're supposed to be like, oh no, Dizzy's dead. But I was like, all right. And then Carmen's rescuing them. And so all of a sudden Rico and Carmen are back together, not romantically, but in the same physical space. And then And then this whole other time after she breaks up with Rico, she's with this other guy who's another space pilot man who she trained with. His name is Xander. And the whole time I remember watching at the beginning of this movie, like he's a college student. That was one of the things I I feel like time wasn't explained well in this movie, like timelines, like did years pass? Was this over the course of a few days? Was this a few months? I wasn't sure what the time frames were in the movie. And so that was kind of confusing at times. Like some movies spoon feed things to you, but this movie is just like feeding you with a fork and then a bunch of stuff is falling through. I just felt like the acting was really bad sometimes, especially during some of the space battles. Uh, The bugs are kind of a lame enemy because we are flying ships into an area where there are slugs shooting guns into the sky. Humans and humanity looks really dumb (laughs) and they're just doing the same thing over and over again it's expecting a different result like I sat down after the movie and I, I was like okay this is what they do they bring whatever they need to in a part of the orbit where the slugs are not shooting things into the sky they do flyovers from a less busy part of the planet to just like pass by Bam, you start wiping out the the bug hordes. I'm just saying, like, it's a start. You don't just drop hundreds of people on a planet's surface in the middle of a bug den. It just didn't make sense. And then all of a sudden, it's like, there's a brain bug on the planet. Because Carl shows up again at Dizzy's funeral. And Carmen, Rico, and, and wait, Carl, Carmen, and Rico. What's weird about this is that they called the dudes by their last name, like Rico and Jenkins, and then they called Carmen and Dizzy by their first names a lot. Why? Whatever. Anywho, Jenkins is back, and all of a sudden they're at Dizzy's funeral and talking about how there's a brain bug on the planet. So I guess they're going to go get the brain bug because Jenkins can use his telepathy to talk to the brain bug. And somehow, just to make a long story short, <laughs> Carmen and Xander end up where the brain bug is. And the brain bug sucks brains out, apparently. And I'm like, is it gaining knowledge or is it just like to eat brains? So I'm not really clear on if the brain bugs are like the hive mind. I think they are kind of like a hive mind, but I think they also just like to eat brains. And I refuse to let anybody tell me different. The brain bug takes a little thing out of its head and it's like a pointy thing to suck the brain out. But it looks like it came out of a vagina and you can never tell me anything different if you watch this movie. It looks very vaginal. I think it was a choice. So a thing comes out of the brain bug's head and sucks out Xander's brain. And then guess who gets saved by Rico? Because Rico's on the planet surface, obviously. And then they go find Carmen, save Carmen, capture the brain bug. 
And then at the end, Jenkins is going to read the mind of the brain bug. And so he goes over to it and he places his hand on it and he's reading the mind and he says, it's afraid. And then they all scream and celebrate. And I was like, wait a second, you're talking to a sentient bug somehow and you're not going to talk like try to do peace talks. You're just excited that it's afraid. And it just rubbed me the wrong way. Just the, the whole vibe of that scene made me uncomfortable because I was like, wait a second. Yeah, I know these bugs have like dismembered every person that you've ever loved or cared about. You know, granted, the bugs got blamed for this massive attack that killed, you know, everyone you loved and cared about. But I don't know. It just didn't feel right. Something about the whole thing felt really off to me. And then at the end, it's Jenkins, Carmen and Rico. And they're walking in like this group. And Carmen's all like, I think if we stick together, nothing bad could ever happen kind of thing. And it just felt weird, like a high school group clique that somehow found each other in the end. Like Jenkins was just off doing whatever the whole time. And then they show like the commercials that they do and they show violent studying of the brain bug, which also really bothered me because I was like, I don't know. It, it just seemed in poor taste. I don't know. It, it's like they didn't establish that the bugs are more than animalistic. It just seemed like the bugs are animals and they're just trying to survive. And so it just seemed like they were torturing these bugs or this brain bug at the end. And it just it, it made me really uncomfortable. I didn't know like who to side with. I mean, I guess because I'm a human, I should have sided with the humans. I just feel like the information presented wasn't super clear. It was just like bam, 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 bugs, bam, bam, war. And then it's like, then there's fighting and there's love triangle and then there's school and then there's boot camp and then there's dismemberment and then there's brain bug capture. And it just, it just didn't flow. The movie didn't flow. I was trying to be open and optimistic about movies that are longer than two hours long. And I'm just going to say it. I'm not as open-minded anymore. Like some movies just shouldn't be over two hours long. I feel I'm going to say it. I don't think most movies should be over two hours long. Couple exceptions, Lord of the Rings. I'm okay with that. But like there are most movies that shouldn't be over two hours long. It's just not needed. And Starship Troopers was an example um, of a movie that shouldn't have been over two hours long. So what did I think about Starship Troopers? <laughs> well, I found it's based on a book. I found out I didn't like it. I appreciated the special effects and the practical effects. I'm a sucker for that. I just feel like there were shortcomings in the way of creativity of fight. There were shortcomings in way of story and of character development. And I guess if you break it down to the bones, this is a sci-fi action movie. There is sci-fi. There is action. If that's all you're looking for, you're going to love this. And you'll probably be happy it's over two hours long because you're like, I'd give me action, give me sci-fi checks all the boxes. I do like action and I do like sci-fi, but this movie just unchecked some boxes for me. So what what am I going to give this movie? Nothing like bringing in season two with a uh, classic Katie tear apart. Um, I'm going to give this movie a four out of 10 lost limbs, because if you are in any part of this universe, you are losing an arm, you're losing a leg, you might even lose your head. So just, you know, be prepared for that future if it does come. So I'm not angry. I'm disappointed you all made me watch Starship Troopers. I can see why you would recommend it to me. But man, I really did not enjoy this movie. And I'm very curious to know what you all think. Am I wrong? Um, I know some of you will tell me that. If you do enjoy this movie, what about it do you like? I mean, I this is like something that I was surprised that I didn't enjoy. It's from the late 90s. Love me 90s flicks, especially action. I feel like 90s action gets it. And I just feel like something about this movie missed the mark. It's not something. The acting wasn't the best all the time. It was a rushed story, but also a very slow story. There's There was like too much happening. It was slow and fast in all the wrong places. That's what she said. Also, I just felt like I didn't care about the characters. The fights were repetitive. The ending left me wanting something different. So that's what I thought about Starship Troopers. So uh, yeah, sound off. Let me know how I did. 
for kicking off episode one of season two of Katie Hasn't Seen That. When I was a kid, I used to spend so much time on Internet Movie Database. I just loved it. It was, I don't know if it was an escapism thing for me, but I would look up trivia about all my favorite movies or movies that I watched. And so one of the things I wanted to start doing, and I can't remember if I started doing this at the end of the last season, is finding some fun trivia to share with you all about the movie from Internet Movie Database, because I think it's kind of neat to learn a couple fun things about a movie after you've seen it. One of the fun facts is during filming, Jake Busey, who played Ace in this movie, suffered heat stroke after working all day in a 120 degree desert sun and it stopped production for a week. And so when he recovered, they cut several large holes into his uniform so he could cool off. And many other cast member suits had this modification as well in order to prevent further cases of heat stroke. Because apparently there was an average of 25 people per day being treated for heat stroke during filming. Oh my God. <laughs> Most of the anachrids appearing on film are CGI, but a few life-sized robotic models were built. However, during battle scenes, the actors wound up looking at director Paul Verhoeven, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, who would stand in front of the life-size models and jump around and scream to elicit the actors' reactions. And finally, there were over 1,400 extras in this film, which I believe there were a lot of people in this movie. So there's a couple trivia bits about Starship Troopers. And normally we end each episode with some comments from people who have commented on the movies that I watched previously. But today I wanted to do something special because someone made a fan version of the song. Actually, we got a couple of them, but I'm only going to share one with you today and I will share another with you in the future. But I'm going to play for you now the Katie Hasn't Seen That theme song upbeat remix from PB and J. Lee. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And thank you even more for making an amazing version of the song that I'm going to play for everyone now. That just feels super cool to me that anybody would do that. So thank you so much for listening to the podcast, PB and J Lee. And thank you for making a cool ass song that I could play for everybody. Keep your ears peeled in the future because I'm going to be featuring obviously comments from all of you about your thoughts on the movies and other things coming up in future episodes. So thank you all for taking the time out of your day to listen to my review of Starship Troopers. And there's more episodes coming. So buckle up. Get ready for that. And yeah, thank you so much for listening today. Take care of yourself. Drink lots of water. Happy New Year. I mean, whenever you listen to this, who knows when you will. But you know what? Happy New Year, just because. And I hope that you are doing well. And I can't wait to talk with you more in the future. And until then, keep your popcorn warm for me. If you want to hang out with me more, or if you just want to yell at me for my thoughts on a specific movie... I stream over on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash katiepetersplays. If you'd like to support the podcast and buy me a coffee to fuel my reviews, you can over on Ko-fi at www.ko-fi.com slash katiepetersplays. You can join my Discord to discuss the movies I review with other Katie Hasn't Seen That fans by visiting discordapp.com slash invite slash katiepetersplays. If you enjoy Katie Hasn't Seen That, please leave a five-star rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps others find the show. Also, feel free to follow and chat with me on Twitter at PlayKatiePlay and on Instagram and YouTube at Katie Peters Plays. Music written and performed by Mark Can Do It, Katie Hasn't Seen That is a part of the Geek Generation Network.